Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So after a non-farm payrolls on Friday there that came in at 285,000 versus 225 expected, even though we had a little tick up on the employment rate there, um, we saw big moves um, before the weekend on the dollar, especially against Japanese yen, whereas most global stock markets took a bit of a slump on the news as obviously they, they take a possible interest rate hike in the US as a, as a short term risk, adding some uncertainty into the markets. Uh, the UK market in particular looking quite down, Germany 30 down, and the US 30 and uh, SBS 500 kind of down a little bit there as well. So this is your Friday candle, um, you followed that through with just a, a slight bit more of a further downwards action this morning. 17.747 is the next potential support level, uh, as MACD is crossing the zero line, the other technical show further room for, uh, for this to move lower, and certainly this looks pressured in the short term. So then moving on to the UK 100, you can see now that we've broken that trend line, it has uh, broken a lot lower. That was uh, Thursday's candle, then you've got your Friday's candle, almost touching 67.71, which is a support level for me that we talked about a large number of times. Um, we've had a very, very, very small bounce this morning, but the, um, the downwards pressure looks to be firmly in play. For the next potential support, 66.86, should that continue on. Japan 225 normally would have been a little bit more buoyant uh, with the moves we've seen in dollar yen, but obviously um, most global uh, equity markets have come off slightly uh, following the jobs number on Friday. Um, this looks like a kind of a, a flag formation or a pendant formation, so consolidation before a rechallenge of 2868 because um, they'll be in the cards. So then looking at dollar yen, uh, dollar yen getting quite close to potential resistance 126. Uh, this is a 13 year high for dollar yen. Uh, a great uh, kind of bullish engulfing pattern again that we've had there on, on, on the Friday session there. A uh, decent amount of momentum. Uh, it stopped shy of resistance and slowly ticking down. From the technical indicator uh, perspective, everything's quite overbought. Uh, the RSI, uh, slow stochastic. And we're beginning to see a reduction in the MACD histogram, which is indicative of the fact that there is uh, a slowdown in momentum. But that's not surprising after the moves that we've seen. If we break 126, then 129.10 is the next potential resistance level. Moving on to West Texas crude, um, we actually had a positive session on Friday, even though we had a big surge in the greenback, which normally pressure, pressures commodities. So crude's doing okay. Uh, the elections over in Turkey as well, probably adding a little bit more uh, instability to that part of the region where the um, popular party there uh, only got 40% of the votes, which is still enough, but not enough for a majority. And the uh, Kurdish uh, party in Turkey got 10% of the votes, the highest that they've ever done, but they're probably going to rally a lot more um, Kurds to the cause on that side, so a little bit more instability, but crude having a decent day hammer formation actually that we've got right here after selling off the previous couple of sessions. Um, $57 is the potential support level. Other technical are pretty flat. This has been moving in the sideways action for uh, a month and a half. Uh, so you've got potential resistance around about 62 and then obviously you've got your short term potential support around about $67. Moving on to gold, gold got hurt on Friday actually, but off the session low, that's quite another surprising move for gold. Um, I thought after, the, after those non-farm payroll figures that the gold would be really feeling the, the pain a lot more, but off the session lows, trying to have a bit of a positive day to day. Intraday chart wise, you can see it's tried to tick up slightly. You've got a death cross on the moving averages, and you can see the uh, MACD is broken below the zero line here as well. Whereas the RSI and slow stochastic still show there's further room again to move lower. So the next potential support would be 1137 on gold, with potential uh, resistance now at 1186. Now we've broken that support, that's now expected to act as potential resistance. So moving on to euro dollar. Uh, Lots of uh, news over the weekend about Greece and the head of the ECB, Juncker, who is uh, not ECB but of the European Union member uh, presidency, and uh, lots of issues between Juncker and the um, Prime Minister of Greece. They're usually known as being more staunch friends, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of words said in the weekend over a lot of European newspapers that uh, patience is fast running out. Uh, and obviously they've got now till the 30th of June to make the IMF payment of 1.2 billion euros and um, things are certainly heating up a little bit and that's what's causing a little bit more downwards pressure on the euro and you combine that together with the dollar strength we've got from Friday um, it's, it could potentially be the perfect storm especially if it looks like that note that they're so far away on reaching a deal that maybe it doesn't happen by the 30th um, so long term potential support one spot zero eight um, we are bang on a support level right now 
uh, which is around about one spot 11. Uh, we're just a little bit above that just now at 43, 11, 43. Uh, bouncing around at 21 period uh, SMA. Uh, whereas the other technicals are again are pretty neutral so uh, the fact that we had this uh, graveyard doji formation there on Thursday with an ability to follow through and then quite an aggressive sell off the following day um, if we break one spot 11 then it's probably quite likely that that uh, downwards uh, pressure would gain uh, momentum and uh, that means that one spot zero weight could be on the cards so finishing up with GBP USD um, hammer formation again sold off strongly on Friday after the figure bounced off potential support one spot 51.85 which also coincides with that 55 period SMA we talked a lot about during these sessions um, it's in positive territory today almost at the top end of its range short term spike uh, but we are in the middle of two core ranges now one spot 54.24 and one spot 51.85 so I come with data wise disappointing data out of China especially uh, trade balance imports uh, down 17.6 percent they're expecting minus 10 so that's that's pretty bad um, again probably adding a little bit of extra uh, just for stimulus over in that part of the world but the Asian stock markets actually took a tumble on the back of that normally bad news is good news in this instance but I think that import figure was particularly bad uh, and if you have a look at you know, German exports they're better they came in slightly better than expected uh, month to month for exports um, imports minus 1.3 minus uh, versus 0 0.5 expectations that's not so great there's not a huge amount extra due today data wise uh, fast forward on to tuesday you've got chinese cpi eurozone gdp and then on wednesday uh, you've got critical inventory so not a huge amount of economic data to be honest to get that excited about so you'll be driven quite heavily by technical factors and we'll see how that pans out so keep around the chart forum because michael hewson and jasper lawyer are two uk analysts We'll be posting lots of interesting technical trade setups for you to have a look at. Make sure you make insights part of your layout going forward to help you navigate the financial markets. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.